What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Tuesday with Mike and Mike. Hope you guys are doing great. And uh, what do we got on tap for today, Mike? Yeah, so give everybody the update on the newest hotel. I know you have a go live date. You get pictures done. Yeah, the new uh, hotel. Yeah, so let's we're do it. we're right at the uh, we're right at the finish line on phase one. So this project is going to be in two phases. So it's fifty-seven rooms total. And we're doing it in two phases. So we'll finish the 30 room building first. And then the 27 units is basically a complete gut and addition. And it's, it's a big, big lift. Um, but we've got our soft opening this coming weekend, which I'm really excited about. So we've got a bunch of family and friends that are going to stay and basically test out every single room. And we were, it's been a, it's been a crazy month. I'll just say that we had a bunch of setbacks and, some slowdowns from the town with different approvals and sign offs and everything else. So it's, it's been interesting. Um, but I actually just got the text from my business partner that we just got the final sign off and CO, which is freaking amazing. Nice. Nothing Let's like cut, cutting it close, but, um, yeah, yeah we're, we're pumped, man. And so I, f I actually flew up. It's actually pretty cool because we've got an amazing crew down in Orlando that does all of our crazy theme stuff and, uh, amazing contractors and cleaners and that team is just phenomenal so it's cool that literally each of them got to have a uh, a play in this hotel deal all the way up in massachusetts so we flew up our muralist from miami to do a bunch of the themed rooms which came out unbelievable and then i had our uh one of our contractors kenny from ready set paint down there shout out to kenny he builds all this crazy cool custom stuff so he built us this insane custom pirate ship bed um which is a really cool bunk bed with like lighting with lanterns and cannons on it it's unreal so he built that for us and drove it up and now i've got uh lewis and jess and their team up here to help with like the final build out and man they're just so good like he got up here uh, a little over a week ago and just like grabbed all the contractors like reeled them in he's like here's a game plan here's how we're going to execute here's how we're going to hit the deadlines and just absolutely smash it. He texted me this morning that all of the regular rooms are done. He's finishing up the club room today, and then he's just going to wrap up all the themed rooms the rest of this week. So that would have not happened without him coming up here. So super grateful for him for reeling the guys in and getting the job done. And then uh, all the landscaping is getting done right now. The patio is pretty much done. And I think tomorrow they're going to run all of the irrigation system. And then sod is going down Thursday and Friday. And it's going to look like a, a brand new property over there. The new signs going up today. It's all coming together. So it's, yeah. it's pretty exciting. Awesome, man. Awesome. So walk me or walk everybody through like how you decided to differentiate yourself in this hotel from all the other ones in Salem. Yeah. So, I mean, the... I'll take a step back. We'll, t we'll talk about how we found it first and then I'll, I'll talk about that. So, uh, my, one of my business partners, he owns a, a real estate brokerage up here, commercial brokerage. Actually they do some residential stuff too, but they own a, a pretty good sized brokerage. And so he's always meeting people and building relationships. So he had built a relationship with the seller and had been basically following up with this person for five years before we actually closed on this deal. And, um, you know, the previous seller had some, some personal things that were going on and they, they were like, all right, it's time. Like we're ready to go. So this deal never even hit the market. They brought it right to us. Um, and we ended up getting a, a very solid deal on the property. So again, totally off market deal found through a relationship. And when I first looked at the property or even before I saw it in person, when they told me about it and I just Googled it and looked it up, I was like, yes, this is going to be a winner. Um, just based on me having a really good knowledge of this market <clears throat> and the location of the property. So 
Salem, Massachusetts, very historic town. It's known for the witch trials. Um, Halloween around here is crazy. We get over a million visitors a year. So that's why the big push to get this thing live in October. Um, but the, a lot of the other hotels and a lot of the newer ones are like right in the heart of downtown. And this one is about three quarters of a mile just outside of downtown. So like you could walk to it if you wanted to, but it's not like in the heart of downtown. But the reason I liked it is because it's got a massive lot and it has tons of parking, tons of open space. You know, Salem is very dense. You know, you came up a couple months ago and stayed at, at a property up here and there's no park, parking on site like at all. It's just very, very dense. And so we've got plenty of parking. We've got a huge outdoor space. Um, so I knew we could make the property itself stand out. Um, our rooms are way bigger than any of the other hotels. Um, and we just crushed the design. So we, we invested a lot in the design and the refresh in the outdoor space. So it has a huge patio now with pergolas and swing chairs, two barbecue grills, two fire pits, um, a bunch of speakers. Shout out to Dave Van Wert for hooking me up with the speaker setup. Um, and it's just going to be a really cool atmosphere there. And then in the summer, we actually just got approval from the town. Now we just need it from the state, I think next week, um, to get our full liquor license for this. So we're going to have an outdoor bar and we've got a pad that's being poured for a couple food trucks. So we'll be able to collaborate with some other local businesses, get the food trucks in there and basically have like a beer garden set up, um, which is going to be pretty sick for next summer once the weather gets good again. So it was about creating the experience. We couldn't compete on the location, but we could create a, a better experience with this property. Yeah, hundred percent. I know you, you have kitchens in every single unit, right? So half of them will. So we've got really large rooms in this 30 unit building. And then when we do the 27, we're basically redesigning it and rebuilding it pretty much from the ground up other than the studs. And those 27 will have full kitchens. So it'll be like little studio and one bedroom apartments in there. So, which helps. And again, for those of you that are considering getting into this, especially in seasonal markets, like we're in like the summer, you know, spring through fall does great, but then in the winter, it's pretty slow up here. Cause the weather's kind of, uh, but when you have full kitchens, you can attract a lot more midterm rentals and longer stays for people traveling on business or doing house renovations or whatever. And that's just based on my experience with doing a couple other properties up here that those tend to do well. So it was important for us to be able to offset some of the, the unit mix here and actually put in full kitchens to help us ride through the winter months and basically protect our profit from peak season. Yeah. It's kind of like, uh, I mean, your other two hotels, you got the COVID Rockport, which is like true vacationers come there. You shut it down for what, like three, four months out of the year. Yeah. And then the Beverly, which is more for, midterm type of stays you got kitchens and all those so it's like you got the best of both worlds all in one piece of property in a better location i mean rockport the location there is incredible it's awesome it's just um, a bit of a drive you know what i mean it's, yeah, like it's kind of far outside of boston instead of 30 minutes so yeah so uh you got so who's like the main guest or traveler type in the 30 unit um and how did you decide to like theme out a lot of those rooms it's um Honestly, a lot of different vacation types. So Salem was founded in the 1600s, I think it's 1626. So it's a very, it's one of the original colonies, quite frankly, in the US. So there's a lot of history buffs that like to come and check all that out. There's certain parts of town that are still preserved that look like it's in the 1700s and the 1600s. It's really cool. Um, I actually didn't get to show you that last time you were up here, but maybe next time. Um, so there's a ton of history here. And then obviously you get a lot of people that are interested in the witches and Halloween. So September through honestly, mid November is, is crazy for like the Halloween season around here. And then you just get a lot of, a, a mix of business travelers and people coming back to visit family. You know, a lot of people that grow up in new England, like my brother, you know, they want to move somewhere warmer, uh, have more of that mild weather. And then they come back to visit family. So it does attract a lot of different demographics. There's also a university here. There's a bunch of hospitals up here. So you, you do attract a wide demographic of people. But for this, it was more focused on creating that, 
that quality experience for vacationers and giving them that authentic Salem experience. Yeah. So what type of rooms do you have and how many themed rooms are there? So there are 10 out of the 30 units, 10 of them are themed and, uh, I'll do like a walkthrough video when it's done, but they look unreal at this point. Like I was in there the other day, we've got one called under the sea. So it looks like you're, you know, under Salem Harbor, basically looking up and, uh, Lewis actually mounted a canoe on the ceiling with like paddles coming out of the side of it. So it literally looks like you're looking up and we've got black lights in there. It glows in the dark. Like it, it's crazy. Um, We've got a forbidden forest room where the bed looks like you're literally sleeping in like a birch tree. It's wild. And you got vines from the ceiling. It's, it's super immersive, just like we would do down in the Disney area. And nothing else around here has that. So it's a truly unique experience. And so that's why I'm super excited and super confident that this is going to do well because there is nothing like this around here. Are you guys going to have like a different marketing strategy for those themed rooms or different pricing strategy for the themed rooms as opposed to yeah, the those will definitely go for a premium. Um, and it'll be a lot more prominent on the website. So we've got our, we did like a sample room shoot, a uh, photo shoot a few weeks ago. None of the themed rooms were done. So it was just a few of our more like standard rooms, which still look freaking awesome. And they're way bigger than our comps. Um, but the theme room photo shoot is scheduled for next Wednesday and Thursday, I believe. Um, and that'll be the full shoot of the entire property. So I'm really excited for that. And it'll be a lot more prominent on the homepage to really play up the uniqueness of these. Um, we also got really involved with, uh, the local travel. I don't know what the best word is, but it's called destination Salem. And they basically run and promote a lot of the tourism for the city. And so we've been running ads in their website. And they have this thing called haunted happenings, which are these like pamphlets and dedicated website that they set up for everything that goes on in Salem for Halloween season. So we've been working with them. Uh, it's getting up on the OTAs right now. The direct booking site is up. Um, so yeah, just getting more involved with like the local tourism office, especially if you live in a place that's like big on tourism, get involved with that and build those relationships. And then they kind of feed us out to a lot of different places and also introduce us to a lot of other local businesses that we can partner with, you know, from the food trucks to there's a yoga studio across the street. You know, when the weather's better, maybe we can do some yoga on the lawn and just different things like that. Yeah, 100%. Cool, man. Um, I think that's all the questions I had. What, when does phase two start for you guys? So your launch, soft launch this week, and then what's the timeline look like for the rest? So, uh, call it like the test test launch this weekend. And then the goal is to open it up next Saturday. I think the 14th to the public. I don't think the calendar is open yet. Cause I want to, I want to see it like done done before I fully open that calendar. Um, I think right now it's open through like mid November or something that people can book and the bookings have already started coming. I just looked at the report the other day, but, um, yeah, the, the construction, we were hoping that that building was going to be rocking and rolling and done by the end of the year. So little tip, uh, when you're dealing with commercial, everything always takes longer and costs more than you originally think. So just know that going in. Um, we just got held up with some of the, the city permitting because they're just backed up. You know, It's easy to kind of point fingers at them, but I think there's one or two people in their engineering department and there's a ton of projects going on in town and they're just they're backed up. So they haven't even approved the, the engineering drawings and everything else. So we're hoping realistically to have phase two open like this time next year and start construction in like December or January because it's going to be a, a big full-on construction project. The other thing I'm excited about too is you want to be mindful, especially like a multi-phase project like this of like, you're going to have guests there and you're going to have construction going on, right? Which isn't ideal. So we, we rented a ton. I mean, you've been to the property. There's a long stretch to drive into it. We rented fencing that will start from the street and go all the way in front of that second building, like the whole length of the parking lot. And we had a custom like scrim designed for it that will show renderings of what the building will look like. So it'll totally like wall off that section. So it won't feel like you're like driving into a full construction zone. Like that'll all be walled off. Yeah, that's really nice. 
I bet those are expensive too. Those renderings. They're no joke to put up. <laughs> yes. You don't want to know. Um, so we did have, um, we have a question in here from Mr. Patel. How did you find your partners? I know you answered this in the last one, but yeah. So I, when I was starting my co-hosting business, I was trying a lot of different things to get leads. And one of the things I did was I hosted a local real estate meetup called Airbnb mastery. And this is back in like 2018, 2018, 2019. And I ended up meeting a gentleman uh, at one of the meetings that was interested and he had a two family in Salem. Um, and he was like, Hey man, this makes sense. I don't want to do anything. Like if this is truly passive for me, like you tell me what it costs to like burnish it and build it out. And, uh, he gave me a shot. And so that ended up turning into, he did really well with that property. We still have it. It's one of our top performing properties and it turned into the partnership with the hotels. So he found the first hotel and he brought it to me and he was like, Hey man, would your systems work with a hotel? Do you think? And long story short, I said, yeah, I think we can make it work. But I said, I don't want a management fee. I want ownership in this thing and I want to be a partner. And he was like, okay, cool. And so we did that first hotel. It went very well. Um, he ended up buying a second hotel with my other business partner and, uh, I managed that one for them. And now I'm a partner on this one with the, with the three of us. So it came through hosting a meetup. Uh, another one, are you using price labs for your hotels? <clears throat> and if you use price labs, are you testing their new algorithm yet? I use price labs for one of them for the, the Beverly hotel, which is basically like an apartment complex. Um, so I use it for that one and it does a good job. I use a tool called SiteMinder, which allows me to pull in my comps into this platform and it gets us on a lot of the hotel OTA. So we monitor that one, uh, on a pretty much a daily basis. And Matt from my team is constantly updating our rates to be competitive with our comp. So it's a much more manual process. It's basically like building in revenue management in house. Um, it's not ideal because it takes a lot of bandwidth, but to, to really dial it in, I feel like it's worth it. And that's most likely what we're going to be doing with this new one too, is just manually pricing it, looking at the comps, coming up with some seasonality based on, you know, star reports and everything else that we've pulled and then just tweaking it, you know, on a weekly basis. Um, let's do one more. Uh, I think Mr. Patel asked again, what are the numbers on this deal? Purchase price and renovation cost. Yeah. So I'll have better numbers once we finish everything, but we purchased it for 4.5 million. Uh, and the renovation budget was basically another four and a half million. Realistically, it's going to be closer to 5 million. So we'll be into it for like somewhere between nine, five and 10 million. Um, and you know, pretty conservative underwriting. It should be worth between 14 to 16 million pretty easily. So we've got some, some nice margin in there for sure. Yeah. So, do you guys plan on doing a refinance in the next five years, 10 years, two years? Like what was that? Um, it depends. I mean, we got, we got some pretty good financing through the SBA, which was great to get the deal done and, and get us some good cash flow. But there are some pretty, pretty big prepayment penalties with the SBA. I believe it's a 10 year prepay penalty, which isn't ideal. But this was more of a cash flow and a long term hold. So I'm not too worried about refinancing it out right away. So if the opportunity comes up and the valuations go through the roof and it makes sense, then we'll pay the penalty and refinance it. But for now, we just want to focus on finishing the project and get this thing cash flowing. Yeah, 100%. Cool. Well, tomorrow I'm going to look at another hotel. Well, it's actually a, an old schoolhouse. That's like a mile and a half from my house. Ooh. And uh, my buddy sent it to me. He just got the listing and we're going to walk it, uh, walk it tomorrow and just kind of figure out what it would look like. It's about uh, two blocks from the water and two miles to downtown, maybe a little bit less. And then there's a, uh, a wedding venue that's an old milk factory that's turned into a wedding venue that is, I don't know, about a hundred yards away. They do 60 some weddings a year. So, and there's no other Airbnbs up there. There's no other hotels up there. It's like a perfect location. So we're going to go walk it and, uh, and talk numbers tomorrow. So I'm pumped about that. I'll definitely be calling you.
probably while I'm there, FaceTiming you and, uh, and walking yeah, through this see. thing. It's How been empty for it? like 20 years. So I think right now it's like 15 school rooms um, with like a small little lobby kind of area. So I'd have to like go full gut and design this whole thing, get an architect involved and everything. So um, Isaac in our boardroom, I think he's, he's, uh, I told him about it too. He's excited. He's going to help me out with um, kind of the pre-construction, pre-development type of stage. So it'll be good, man. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Leveraging that group too, man. That's the beauty of that, that boardroom group. So much expertise in there in different, uh, different fields, which is freaking it awesome. Is. It's a, it's a I just code, bring, man. I just bring opportunities and, and get feedback of like, what, what can we do here? How can we think a little bit bigger about this property? Um, and it just expands my, my thinking 10 X just being in that room. So love it. Love it. Well, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Um, Mike, we, we touched on it, but if people want to hear more info about the boardroom, do we get a link they can check that out or they want to just send me a DM and we'll get them info. How do you want to do that? Yeah. EsterSecrets.com slash apply or yeah, go to that one. There's also a case study on the first hotel that you did. EsterSecrets.com slash hotels. You can check that out. It's what 10, 12 minutes. Um, yeah. and then just book a call with us. We can have a no pressure conversation of, Hey, what are your goals? What are you looking to do? Are you trying to buy a hotel, are you trying to buy, you know, take a multifamily, turn it into a hotel. Um, so it's, uh, it's just more, Hey, what are you thinking? What's the strategy? If we can help you, we'll, we'll show you the way. Awesome, man. Well, as always appreciate you guys for tuning in. If you have any more questions, just post them down in the comments below. If you're listening to this on all the podcast platforms, make sure you join the free short term rental secrets, Facebook group. We live stream these every single Tuesday and it gives you a chance to ask us your questions directly. Group's totally free. We've got an amazing community in there, about 6,500 people, very active group. So don't wait, head over to Facebook, go to Short-Term Rental Secrets. You'll see the blue cover photo with my face and E's face on there. It's the official group of the podcast community. So get in there and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Hey, STR Nation, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes, and we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.